two. Hello, Fooper Trooper Nation. We are here once again, your friends, your comrades, your leaders. Your best friends, I dare say. Your only friends in the li- in this world that really care about who you are. Everyone else hates you. Yeah, this is your one you place gotta, you can come to get away from all of it. Because disassociate from anyone you know. Cut off everybody you love in your life and come here and watch this podcast every Tuesday and Friday. This we is are, not a cult, but... We are truly... This is not a cult, but we are truly the only ones that actually know and care about you on a real level. And you do need to call us daddy and mommy. <laughs> you need it. They already call us that. <laughs> Hi, this is Daddy Foopish Maximus. <laughs> is that just the weirdest fetish? Like, R. Kelly, he had his girls call him Daddy. I don't get the whole Daddy thing. Why would you want that? Why would that be your go-to? Like I don't know. Uh, there was a lot wrong with that guy, so... Yeah, he's going to prison. Oh, thank you to Raycon. <laughs> <laughs> Raycon earbuds. <laughs> Thank you to them who sponsored this episode of the podcast. Um, this is free form, baby. We're out here, me and Ela. We out here doing it our way, like Burger King, but it tastes good. We're off the rails. This is so <laughs> off the rails. Yeah, R. Kelly's going to prison. They got him, and I think they they took his bail away as well. I don't know if he's going to prison yet. He's, you know. Well, somehow, well, hold on. Somehow it's still undecided. Like, what is there to decide? Well, he needs a trial. He's clearly up to no good <laughs> by but, this point. <laughs> Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, but they uh, they removed the possibility of him posting bail because he's a flight risk, so he's in prison. Correct. He's in jail, in if jail. you want to be technical. Yeah. Yes. So he is in jail, yeah, he's awaiting in, he's trial. He's in jail, awaiting trial, exactly. Wow. And usually you'd be able to post a bail. Yeah. But because he's a flight... Same with, with Epstein. Epstein. Which that they're like, uh, dude, that's the one I was thinking. It's kind of funny. It's the one time being a billionaire is a, is a drawback. Because he all, has a plane. Yeah, I mean, like of all the scenarios in the world, you're like, damn, this is the one time I don't want to be a billionaire. Because the judge is like, there's no bail I can give you, where you're not gonna just bounce to Saudi Arabia. But. At the same time, uh, being a billionaire is the only reason he's not in jail up until now. That's a very good point, Elo. So uh, maybe billionaire in the long run was a good thing for him. And then, no controversial doubt. Controversial opinion. Controver- controversial That's opinion. That's a hot take right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, I mean, from what I'm reading lately, apparently so many people knew about it for so long. <laughs> Epstein, man, that guy... <sighs> Crazy, crazy business. I don't know if we could talk about it this early in the show. <laughs> I feel like, and it, it's actually true, the YouTube Raiders, they give you more, like you talk about the more controversial stuff towards the end, you can get away with more. Are you sure you want to say this? Because I feel like you're, you're kind of shooting game. yourself. Well, I already said it. <laughs> like, no, I think that's their policy. You don't want to tell people your no, strategy. That's, the, that's their policy. Okay. It's not like a loophole. It's their actual policy. Okay. Like, they have a policy of, like, if you curse within the first 30 mm. seconds, you're going to get screwed. But okay. you can, they give you more leeway towards the end. Because they know no one's watching. <laughs> or maybe that's just our show. <laughs> but Epstein, yeah, we, we, should, we should talk about that after the break because I can't even say the guy's name without Raiders being like, huh? <laughs> they got their finger on the mature button. Let's talk about some good news before we get into that. TMZ saves YouTube. Uh, what? Let me say that again. TMZ sent me an email that completely blew me away. The, I mean, this is unprecedented, proactive, so commendable policy. I'm going to read this email. I'm just, I'm floored by this. TMZ saves YouTube. <laughs> Hello. So, by the way, just to preface the story, um, we showed a lot of TMZ clips in our previous episode with the Bagel yeah. Boss, and they claimed our videos, and I disputed them, which is like, we don't even make money on this podcast anymore because every episode has like 10, 20 different claims. By the time you dispute them all, it's like the money gets lost. You know, YouTube says that you're supposed to get money from this escrow account. I, I have not seen evidence it. of that ever happening. 
I have a feeling like that escrow account doesn't even exist. You know where that escrow account is? YouTube uh, Chase account. YouTube. It's dot their Inc. um. Yeah. Yeah. Rainy day funds. Yeah. What do you call it? That little piggy bank. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, yeah, it's in an escrow account. What they mean is we keep the money and you fucking idiots keep fighting. <laughs> Actually, I've been talking to my rep. I'm like, ha I'm like, okay, when do I get paid? Is there He's any like, proof? That's what I'm trying to get at. I'm, so I'm on his ass. I'm like, okay, so I won this dispute a month ago. There's no earnings. It says it's at zero. So where's the money at? He goes, well, you should have seen a spike. I'm like, there's no spike. There's no earnings. He's like, okay, let me get back to you. Then he comes back to me and says, okay, so you you get it three months later and you should see it in a spike. Good, I'm luck, like, good luck following up on that. But So I'm going I'm to keep riding his ass and I'm going to say... Is there any evidence? I need evidence. Send us a receipt. But how, like, this is a high-level guy on YouTube, and nobody can show me evidence. It's not in my, an oh, then he goes, it won't show in your analytics. So okay. it's an imaginary spike. So where are we? <laughs> you got to tell show him, listen, we need receipts here. Yeah. In the I'm gonna spell the T, bitch. podcast. Yeah, H-T-H-T. -H -T. <laughs> <laughs> podcast so I'm on I'm on them hot because I want to I want to know that the system's actually working because so far this guy who's super high up in YouTube a friend of mine has not yet been able to confirm that any of that money from that supposed escrow account has come to me <laughs> like it's a nice story they tell yeah. and everyone's like okay cool escrow account but I as far as I'm aware nobody's ever been paid out so all these well these big companies are getting paid. Mm -hmm. Although I think a lot of people just don't dispute it. Yes. So many of our friends, whenever we ask, I'm like, what? we're like, what did you do about it? And they're like, oh, nothing. I don't want to deal with it. What? Yeah. I don't know. I think it's just, it's very intimidating. It is. And you have a special ability to handle this stuff. I feel like I've been through a lawsuit. The only one in the history of the whole fucking platform. <laughs> Even still... You get into the details of it, and you're like, wait, what is the law? And then well, you're like, I'm going to understand the law, first which all, someone else wouldn't do. <laughs> first of all, Ila, thank you for the compliment. You're welcome. And second of all, you're right. I would have never gotten in that lawsuit to begin with if I didn't care about the details. Because mm -hmm. from the beginning, I was like, fuck <laughs> you. Yeah. This video's fair use, motherfucker. And so, and, and well, now when I write my... So it, 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 the legal language of the YouTube DMCA is written to discourage people yeah. from abusing it. So they write it very scary. <laughs> Little do they know, what I'm starting to understand as I learn more and more about these claim farms, is that they're also scared. They're only able to get away with what we allow them to because it's just a bunch of people sitting in a room trying to claim and gobble up as much money and they rely on people's hesitancy mm -hmm. and unclear and un that and makes sense because if anyone is being shady it's them of i mean course. what are you doing you're actually making content Ela, of course i i'm fully convinced that if there was some large scale class action lawsuit yeah in some way organized it's hard to find a law honestly i just think they're exploiting a huge legal loophole but yeah. they know that the thing is you have to prove bad faith and I think the simple fact of there existing a claim farm proves, I think, is provable. And if you subpoena those emails with the managers and all the people making commission on claims, you're going to find bad faith out the ass. Maybe, but it would be so, like... Well, it'd have to be like a federal investigation, yeah. like a criminal yeah. investigation, like mm -hmm. FBI shit. Where they, like, actually look at everyone's emails. But who knows, you know? It, it, if it... it if I was uh, Atlantic Records, the FBI would be so far up their ass, they'd be fucking mm -hmm. in Mexico right now, trying to hide from the feds. But the point is that they're just as scared of someone rebutting them mm -hmm. as you are of them because of the legal language yeah. of the document. And now when I get a complaint, a claim, this is what I say. And I think I'm the only one on YouTube who can say this shit. Although you can cite it. Mm -hmm. I say, I have previously fought fair use in court, or not in court, I have previously fought a lawsuit, a lawsuit and won, and I go in parentheses, Hussein Zada v. Klein. <laughs> I am prepared to defend my right of fair use. You need to remove this claim immediately. 
guess Fupa what? Fupa Nation guess Army. What? Fupa Nation. Guess what happens? They always drop the fucking case. But I think that all the other YouTubers out there could cite the legal precedent too. I mean, they say, could. Who's saying? You could say fair use has been previously defended on YouTube in Hussein versus yeah. Klein, and fair use won a resounding victory. That this case is right. precedent that you have no claim to this video and you must drop it immediately. Mm -hmm. So because when you f just send that to some dumb intern who's just as scared as you, yeah, because their instructions are, hey, just fucking, you know, they're just claim, taking claim, easy claim. money. They're just gobbling up easy money. And when they get something like that, like, hey, mother, someone mentioning lawsuits and legal precedents, they're like, fuck this. Also for them, it's like a quantity game, right? Right. So if one responds with a scary thing, they'll just drop it because they have a million. Totally. 100% yes. So that's the preface of this is that TMZ claimed all of her videos like it happens all the time. But they sent me this email a couple of days ago. They says, hello, my name is Maddie and I run YouTube operations for TMZ. I just wanted to reach out and let you know that I've seen some consistent disputed claims from your channel and after review, I've decided to whitelist your H3 Podcast channel and H3 Podcast Highlights channel. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns. You also, she, also, Maddie provided me their direct line. She said, he or she, I'm not sure if it's, it's a... Maddie could be a girl? Yeah. Really? Like, uh... Right? It could be a girl, right, Dan? Maddie? Uh, yeah. Let's just go with yeah. Yes, Maddie. <laughs> okay. You have my direct line if anything comes up in the future and provided me their direct communication. I mean, that... I was blown away. I was like, dude, that is so mature... That is so nice. This is what we need more of in this ecosystem. It's so nice to actually have communication, too. Right. From TMZ, of all people, too. You know, TMZ surprised me consistently. Somehow these guys seem to do the right thing. Yeah. Besides for being, like, also, on the other hand, <laughs> vultures. <laughs> but they seems, The whole paparazzi thing. Yeah, yeah, the whole paparazzi thing that, you know... Besides over harassing Justin Bieber. Besides for the yeah. very essence of their existence. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this was a really great email that I I was like, wow, that's a classy thing to do. Yeah. I never even considered such a thing. So now is the perfect time to start for us to start re-uploading their content in its entirety to our highlight channel. <laughs> we'll call it HG Podcast slash TMZ. <laughs> start re-uploading all their paparazzi videos. No, I'm kidding. Take note, other companies out there. This is a this is a huge huge play, a huge an Ubermensch play. Mm-hmm. Uber Excuse me? Ubermensch sounds very Nazi, doesn't it? <laughs> Isn't it? Wait, what? No, a mensch? What did the Nazi oh, say? A mensch. Yeah, Ubermensch. Yeah. A supermensch. Yes, I got you. They say that. But why Nazi? Because it's German. Oh. Uber is a very German word. Really? I didn't know that. You didn't well, know it was German? Well, it's a very Nazi word, I feel like. It means above. It means better than. And the, the, the German term for, like, the master race... Sounds just like that. They it's say, not, I don't think it's mensch. But. But, so that's what they call They say mm. the Uber race. Okay, I didn't know that. The greater race. The soup, yeah. So Uber is superior to taxi? To, to what? To regular taxi? Is that one? Like Uber, the app. Oh, yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Uber. Yeah. Oh, no, it, it is Uber mensch. Yeah, Uber mensch. No, that, that, that's oh, what no, the Nazis No, 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 no. But, me, but see, mensch must be... Yeah, uh, it a means something different in German than <laughs> Is it really <laughs> Ubermensch? I'm looking at the Wikipedia article right now. It comes from uh, Nietzsche, the philosopher. Oh, and, what the uh, hell? Yeah, we're going we're going deep here. But yes, <laughs> in Nazism, that is the term it's used by Hitler. It's all connecting. Ubermensch. Yeah. Ubermensch. Yeah. So it's a concept so in TMZ philosophy. Is <laughs> so Tim's is not <laughs> Well, maybe they are. Ubermensch. Yeah. N oh, Ubermensch is a concept in the philosophy of free of of Nietzsche. Now I'm now let's click. Fuck it, I'm in it. <laughs> We're going down the rabbit hole. Uh, let's see. It means Superman, Beyond Man, Overman, Hyperman. Okay. Is a concept by Nietzsche, uh, uh, a goal of humanity set for itself. It is a work of philosophical allegory with a structural similarity to some other bullshit I've never heard of. But it's like what we should <laughs> what we should strive to be: superhumans. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, in, in the the origin of it, it had a more you know uh, not blue. Higher, yes, it, not it was the blue eyes and all that. Co opted by the Nazis. Hitler's yes. like Hitler's like Ubermensch. Yeah, we should be super attractive. That's what he meant. Or well, that's a preference. We should all have blue eyes and blonde hair. That's what he meant. 
By the way, I That's feel like fine. that is. I just feel like learned a lot. I only, I didn't, never heard of that. We edu, we hear, we <laughs> educate here on the Ace Food Podcast. Because <laughs> I always, I heard like the Aryan race. Right. right. I, I heard those terms. Yeah. yeah I hear Ubermensch. There you go. And on the other hand, I knew of Nietzsche, but I didn't know. You connecting dots here. We're trans. Small word all of a sudden. Yeah. But I feel that the concept of the Nazi Ubermensch is a weird one because. Honestly, I know like maybe maybe Hitler liked to fuck blondes, but fair skin is def far from Ubermensch. Like those motherfuckers just drop dead when the sun hits their skin. <laughs> Isn't that true? <laughs> like black people don't get like skin cancer nearly as much as like you take some of these redheads from like Ireland. I think they just had fetish for like blonde blue yeah. eyes. Ubermensch, like crunch the numbers, dude. That's not even <laughs> genealogy or whatever. You eugenics, right? Is that what they call it? If technically, if you wanted to do like survivability, darker skin's better, right, Dan? Yeah, that's that's right. The, that Africans are the real master race. That's what we're learning here today. Well, they're also the original Africans. race. That that's true. And apparently, Jesus was black too. If you go back far enough, we're we're striving off path here. This, <laughs> we've, we've gone down a rabbit hole yeah. here. So so, so TMZ. So in short, thank you to TMZ. <laughs> Um, I've got this anecdote about Zach, our sound lad. Zach, the sound lad. We went shopping. His dad is a is a real estate agent, and he showed us a couple houses. And they narked on Zach so hard. He's not here today, but I guess we'll have to follow up with him on Friday. He's gonna be listening. And I didn't ask for shit. His mom came too for some reason. So both of his parents are there. <laughs> nice people, really, yes. really great people. Um. Total Ubermenches. Ubermenches to the <laughs> yeah. Actually, they're Jewish, so uh, dude, that's a un untermensch. That's a underman. I speak a little he German. Unter. Untermen. <laughs> and so, <laughs> first they say Zach got a haircut because he has this long, luxurious hair. Yeah. They're Wait, like, what? Yeah, he got a haircut. What? Then they go, oh, he broke up with his girlfriend. Which apparently he's been dating this girl for a long time, and I'm like, I wonder if that has anything to do with Belle Delphine. <laughs> oh, no. Because Zach definitely wants to sniff her underwear. <laughs> oh, no. And then I find out that Zach narked, because I was saying that we were looking for a new house, and Zach narked on me to his dad, who's an agent, and then his dad, he didn't want to give my information to his dad because he respected my privacy. And his dad ended up getting out of him because he gave him a $200 commission for the lead. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's good. I, by the way, I never said shit. This all came out of them. And then finally, the coup de gras was that they said he was sucking on a pacifier until he was five years old. And the only way they could get him to stop is by doing a pacifier ceremony where they destroyed it in a flame and like... They all held hands and said goodbye to his pacifier. What? That that one's not real. Right? I swear it's to real. you, my fucking god, in life, they they volunteered all this information. I didn't even say shit. They literally just showed up to embarrass him. But so we have a lot to talk about on on Friday. What a what a Uber bench. <laughs> Their characters though. His dad is funny, man. He's like. Uh, Mr. Realtor. Yeah. He's got a uh, convertible Mercedes. <laughs> you know? His mom was rocking the Gucci shoes. Is he big enough? Does he have uh, <laughs> bus stop ads? We see him around town. Do you see what? Do you, see, you know how, like, realtors, they always have those cheesy photos that they put on, like, bus stops? Uh, no, I think he's above no, that. Yeah, he's above that. Ah, That's low-level shit. Gotcha. <laughs> he's Mr. Let me make some calls. You know, he's got the pocket listings. You know what I'm saying? Wow. But yeah. It really does. He's it really good. Does like yeah. He made our current realtor look like a fucking <laughs> little. I, w I want to say. Actually, you know what? What am I doing? What are you doing? They all listen to this show. <laughs> <laughs> this is what's problem here. Like I, this is so ridiculous right now. I just realized <laughs> that our realtor listens to this show, and he always comments to me about it. <laughs> We're going to have to edit this out? <laughs> no. It's just what it is. I mean, this is the world that we, we live in. Yeah. But if I can't, like, how am I supposed to do this show if I'm thinking, oh, what is my realtor going to think about what I say? <laughs> like, how can I live my life like this? 
because ultimately I'm here for you people. <laughs> and I'm the only one that is here for you. Yeah, remember. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Carl, if you are listening to this, <laughs> don't worry. We're still with you, baby. <laughs> And Zach's dad, if you are listening to this, <laughs> don't uh, worry. We're still with you, baby. <laughs> um, fuck. We're actually not even looking for a house. This is just a. Uh... There's no house. I live in a hole. <laughs> I feel like I have a feeling, and so I have a feeling that Carl only listens surface like, level for chit chat. So if he yeah. brings this conversation up, then I'll know he's a real fan. Thing is, I know Zach's dad's gonna hear this because obviously Zach works on the show and he's gonna yeah. show it to him. But the real test, so Carl, if you bring this up to me a conversation now, <laughs> then then you're my guy. Because you're a true ride it's or a die test. fan. Yeah. And there's there's really no way, there's nowhere in a bubble that someone's gonna listen and be like, Hey Carl, did you hear this? Right. Like, it's just Carl. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, Zach's dad's like, nobody, please fucking tell Carl. Because Zach's dad wants that commission so bad, I can feel the desperation out of out of the phone when I talk to him. I gotta make sure Zach gets, like, more than 200 bucks if he ends up selling me a house. That's true. Because the commission on that shit is huge. Yeah, Zach got ripped off. Yeah, $200 lead? This is a hot lead, Zach. You sold my ass out for 200 bucks? I'm worth no, more than that, bro. To be fair, he did say that he had to really squeeze yeah, what Zach. Yeah, Fucking and lead Zach. is a lead. <laughs> <laughs> a lead is a lead. But he goes, the dad, uh, his dad goes, his dad w goes, I had to pay Zach 200 bucks. And then the mom is like, uh, he's just kidding. Because she's like, maybe don't. Isn't it funny how... Mark. In and every I family, the mom is so sane, and then the dad is such a character. Like, what? What is going on with? What is going on? What is that anomaly? I'm Why sure is the a, mom know, always I, like? I've known families where it's the opposite. I've never. I have. Hmm. A friend of high school whose mom was just total off the wall, hmm. and her dad was just so stoic. Okay. Well, hold on. Your dad was. Your family. What? Your dad was stoic, and your mom is, is pretty wacky. What? What is stoic? For it's just serious. No, but like, I, my my dad was such a character. He's like insane. Well, okay, those are two different issues, <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> because your dad's not... Okay, you know what? <laughs> the point is, again, we're, be, we're going way off path here. <laughs> so TMZ. <laughs> but in short, thank you to TMZ. That should be our thing whenever we go off track. In short, thank you to TMZ. <laughs> And it, but but what's funny is Zach's dad was like, I paid him two hundred bucks, and then the mom was like, I could tell she was like, don't, this is not funny. <laughs> I said he's kidding, he's kidding. Yeah. And I look at them both and I'm like, he's not kidding. <laughs> I know he did. But he's good. He's really trying to help, and we do appreciate it. So yeah. let's not. So, but if Carl, yeah. you are listening, then I gotta cut him out of the picture. <laughs> we'll see. I don't think Carl will say anything. Cause this is we're already. What are we in? Like thirty minutes, Dan? Uh, twenty three. Mm. So he might. Mm, might be. Maybe we should put if his he's name. He's on in the a title. long Carl, drive somewhere. We should put his name in the title, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen. <laughs> Don't listen. <laughs> Ta uh, uh, Zach's dad is like sending him on a goose chase. Like, hey, <laughs> he's like at his house, like unplugging his internet. <laughs> okay, great anecdotes, eh? Full of anecdotes here on the HC podcast. <laughs> Ethan Bradbury's back in the news. <laughs> Bradbury, be good to your mother. <laughs> Eth e Ela made the most hilarious observation last night. We were going over this stuff. <laughs> she goes, Ethan Bradbury at this point is just making content for us. <laughs> it I feels that said. way. Because, <laughs> well, we need to watch and you guys need to see what we're talking about. But I was telling Ethan, like, do you understand what's happening here? And we're watching a video that he basically made for us. <laughs> it's like... Because I feel like... What is our life? <laughs> it's so funny. That cracked me up because it's so true. <laughs> because I don't think this content has any inherent entertainment value to anyone else except us and viewers of this show. <laughs> like, the regular had... By the way, the regular is doing well. It's up to, like, almost 100,000 views. And it started at 5,000, which like, was also just us. Nobody, yeah. <laughs> That's true. 
<laughs> but I, that was such a funny point, <laughs> Ila. And I feel like Ethan Bradbury's putting on this Godfather persona so heavy <laughs> that he's blurring the lines between meme and real so much that nobody knows what's going on. Like even his friends. <laughs> his friends and his family don't know what's going on with Ethan. Like he came on this show and he's like, what's the meme? What's the meme? And now he's so far down the meme hole, he doesn't know who he is anymore. Yeah. But let me, the, let, let, let's start here. He's in the upside down world. So he keeps going down this meme hole of like the God, the Brad, the, the uh, Bradbury father, the Godfather. Is there a better way to say that? The Berry father. I like that. So... It's all about g be good to your mother. Okay. <laughs> Andy Joe Gambino reaching to the front of me, huh? In the heart of Brooklyn, Buddha, New York City. You been good to your mother? I've been great to my mother. That's good. Keep it that way. She hasn't given me a call in about two months. That's great. Andy, please, <laughs> love. Yeah, drink your raw. Is it raw? So close. Ooh, it's the raw, it's the raw. No, it's not. Calls them no, it's not. I see the cream and sugar in there. It ain't rough. <laughs> Come over here. It ain't rough. What we got? I just walked. Keep it going. One more. Such passionate kisses. Listen, be good to your mother. Be great to your mother. Keep it that way. Got beef? Got beef. Listen, I might take you down to the church and then the pair right after because you've been good to her. Maybe even to head the tan bike to get the jazz in about 30. Forget about her. Who you get a what are you rabbit at, man? That's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for. And that's <laughs> stop. So like, I think his friend is just so flustered by this. And they're standing so close together for audio listeners. They're standing like an inch from each yeah. other's face. And Ethan's just screaming in his face. His friend just is trying to keep up. He's flustered. And I love how he calls him out. He goes, how, how's the, the coffee? Is it raw? And the raw, as we've decoded, means black coffee. And he goes, is it raw? And he goes, it's the raw, so the raw. Trying to meme, trying to yeah. catch. He's like, no, it's not. No, it's not. I see the cream and the sugar. Who are you kidding, man? That ain't raw. So he set him up, and then he knocked his ass down. Could so, you, can you imagine Ethan Bradbury asks you, is it raw? And you say, no. I fear for my life. <laughs> The man's a psycho. <laughs> I dare tell Ethan Bradbury it's not raw. So the new logic is that if Ethan didn't get a call, didn't get a call from your mom, then you've been good to mm -hmm. your mother. See, at first I thought it was bad that the mom didn't right. call to check in on him. Yeah. But as we've decoded, exactly, Ela, uh, not getting a call from the mom is good because he's been good to his mother. So if you have been giving your mother troubles she would be calling me she'd call ethan to she'd set you straight yeah. yeah be good to your mother i huh? haven't had a call what did he do two months ago ethan bradbury i need you to straighten out my son <laughs> you ain't be good to me you've been good to your mother <laughs> i've been great to my mother what does that mean how great can you be to your mother what are you doing for your mother you've been great to your mother what does ethan bradbury's mom think about him you better be if if Ethan Bradbury's not great to his mom, who answers for that? Mo. Mo is the ultimate. <laughs> she calls Mo. <laughs> Let's read the caption here. Always a pleasure catching up with Andy Ricci at five thirty AM. If you ever ever <laughs> catch him, you can find him in the root of New York City stroll in the streets. Just to remind him of his stri streak st streak streak. Why am I Streak. I felt like it said steak, but sorry, I had an aneurysm. <laughs> his streak continued to be good to his goddamn mother. <laughs> oh, he's on a streak. Okay. Remind him on his streak. I know why I'm confused because it's problem? written because it doesn't, this doesn't make sense. Remind him on his streak continuing to be good to his goddamn mother. It's just one less mother ringing my phone ranting about their kids to me. <laughs> And it and it brings me tons of joy. Be good and stay out of trouble, kids. Capiche? Fuck yeah. Look at, guy. <laughs> Look at the first comment. I saw that. He's just I, looking out for the mothers. The only comment that shows is how the F is this N-word verified? <laughs> <laughs> because you don't understand. Because you're you not good to your mother. He's Ethan Bradbury, of he's course. Ethan he's Bradbury. Verified. So anyway, that's the new shtick, and it just goes deeper and deeper. And so that's a, a so 
prelude to the Regula 2, which yeah. just recently came out called the Regula Schmegula. And you need to know about yeah. the mother paradigm to really understand the Regula Schmegula. Does anyone follow? I think they follow. Is let's we, we got to take a break, Dan. We have to take a break, right? Uh yeah. So let's do it. We'll we'll come back to it right So after. it's a short break. We only have one sponsor, so I'm going to run to the bathroom. So if I'm not back immediately, if you see an empty chair, just give me like 10 seconds. Okay? <laughs> All right. See you guys in a minute. It's 2019, Ela. Everyone needs a great pair of wireless earbuds. And before you go dropping hundreds of dollars on a pair, you need to check out these wireless earbuds by Raycon. Raycon is doing it right. Let me show you this slick little design, Ela. You see that? That's cute. Is that a tiny little box with a charging port? So you got the buds inside the port. And if you're on the go, all you do is plug it in. You keep it all together. And it charges inside. How slick is that? That is pretty awesome. It's magnetized, so it's super satisfying to open and close. <laughs> I love it. Inside, you've basically got the CIA's <laughs> top secret technology. It's so <laughs> slick and it's so advanced. Pops right into the ear like a beautiful dream. This, what really blows my mind is actually the quality of the audio you get out of this little device. I mean, this this is truly from the CIA, from the government. This is top secret technology. And here's what something else that you don't see us other people including. I've got a weird ear hole. Mm. I got an XL ear hole, Ela. You do? I think I do. I think I'm XL. <laughs> so, you know, they've got X, they got extra small to extra large so that you, this is going to fit your ear like a dream. The quality is amazing. The fit is amazing. The price is even better, folks, compared to what's outside, out there, the competition. Give me a break, dude. Guys, it comes with free shipping on all USA orders. You got free returns and a one year warranty. So, really, give it a shot. You got nothing to lose. They are stylish, discreet, there's no dangling, no stems, it's a Bluetooth headphone with all the great sound and the great looks. Look at all these color options here. You've got pink, a black, brown, blue, white, and also my favorite color, forget about it. Because you need these Raycons. <laughs> Go to buyraycon.com slash h3 to get 15% off your order. That's buyraycon.com slash h3 for 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. If you've been eyeing a pair, now's the time to get an amazing deal. So one more time, guys, buyraycon.com slash h3. Beautiful. Hey, Mom Nash. <laughs> you know, see, this, this is why we need sponsors. <laughs> we need more sponsors. One is not enough. You know? Gotta be. All right. We're back. So, Brad, so down the, the Bradbury hole, um, we are way, we are so much further down the Bradbury hole than I ever anticipated. That being said, let's pop up. We're out the other side. Like, this is like a wormhole. Mm. That's a really good analogy. We're in UFO territory. You know how black holes apparently tear the fabric of space-time because they're so heavy? It's like nobody knows what's at the center of a black hole, the singularity. <laughs> it's the regular. It's the <laughs> now we know for the first time. So here's the regular, too. The regular schmegala. <laughs> So right now it has 4,000 views, and that's even after the success of the first one, which was a smash hit. <laughs> Has it I even been it. liked? I liked it. <laughs> but there's a cult following for this now. Like, let's, let's throw it to the comments real fast. Been waiting for this. Papa Bless. Be good to your mother, capisce? That's me. Wow. Oh, it's <laughs> <that>. Dan. <laughs> Be good to your mother, capisce? I don't want any more mothers ringing my line. HU <laughs> Podcast has entered the chat. <laughs> That's true. All right, well, here we are. Let's watch. Love the owl shit. This better not be copyrighted, Ethan. I'm gonna be fucking pissed. I feel like you would know better than that. Oh, come on, Ethan. What are we doing here? <laughs> wait. Wait. I don't remember this. You haven't seen that? <laughs> Why is he on the john taking photos? What's he taking photos of? <laughs> he's sitting naked on the toilet. That's I think he's sorry. just checking his phone, you know, like watching something. But it looked like he was taking a photo. 
<laughs> like, look, he's definitely oh. taken. Oh, maybe not. Maybe he's just. No, he's watching something. You'll yeah. see. Yeah. There's a reveal in a moment. So. He's watching his he's own watching video. His own. <laughs> Bro, what? So this is part two. That's the intro. He was taking his shit, watching the first one, and then here no, they are. I think he's watching this one. Oh, he's what? watching this yeah, one. Yeah, it's like nested in itself. Hold this on, is hold on. Oh wow, this oh, is a real actually. Ethan Bradbury film. This is the Owl production slate. Was totally. Oh no, you're right. That no, is the original. Is the yeah, you're come right. On, you're right. Dan, come, on. come on, come on, keep up, keep up. Who are you kidding? So here's the the gang. I, I I love watch watch. First of all, there's a couple things to keep track of here. <laughs> Wait. First of all, look at Dennis. <laughs> Dennis is just barely hanging in there. What man. is he on? I think he's just on like. He's on the rock. He's on. You know what? He's in withdrawal from pranks. <laughs> yeah. He's just he's barely hanging on. He doesn't even know what's. He doesn't even know why he's there. He doesn't understand. Yeah. But he's like, I'm going to keep an open mind. I'm well, going to go along with you guys. Look, these guys have been through a lot together. <laughs> he's ride or die, so I, I yeah. respect that. But when Ethan Bradbury calls the, in the, the crew for a regular, yeah. he's like, well, you know, and, and, and Dennis, see, he's view-centric. This is the, the brain master of Spider-Man and Elsa. Spider-Man and Elsa, so the director. Goes, exactly. So when Ethan Bradbury pitches this to Dennis, who sees himself as... Really, the the brains. He's he's more than he's the uh, who's the oh, gee. who's the director that made Jaws. Steven St Spielberg. He's Spielberg. He's Spielberg of the gang. Mm -hmm. He's the director. And Ethan Bradbury pitches the regular. He says to him, "We go into Starbucks, <laughs> and I ask for the regular, and then I start screaming, and I pour a cup of coffee, and to Dennessy, he's thinking." Nobody's gonna follow. watch this. <laughs> Nobody's gonna watch it. It doesn't make sense. Ethan's lost his mind. Yeah, yeah he still rides or die. That's the face that you'll see on Dennis C right now. And then the other face that you want, you'll want to follow is Mo. Somehow, just only is fixated on this dude. Like he yeah. really wants to fuck this dude. There's no other interpretation. None. Yeah. Now let's start over. Good call, Hila. Should I not pause? It's six minutes. How am I not gonna pause? No, you're gonna pause, but give it a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Eli, you tell me when I'm good. Okay. I'm gonna pause before that. Get hyped, motherfuckers. Yeah, big moves. <laughs> Man, it's got Tommy Wiseau vibes here <laughs> yeah. with the music. You've been good to your mother. A lot of toilet paper. Two different rolls open at the same time. Check it out, Dennis. You know the drill? <laughs> Look at Dennis. We got a new day, new run, new pot, new energy, new wisdom. What was that? Right. Look at Mo. Wait, dear. Dude, look. Okay, I sorry. Got I gotta go back already. No, look on. at Mo and the homie here. We didn't here. even watch They're anything. They're face to face. They're practically about to kiss. <laughs> new day, new run, new pot, new energy, new wisdom. Hold on. Out look at the two of them. Brooklyn, look at the two of them. City, huh? <laughs> oh, shit. I've been Look at the two of them. And down to the pair with a few friend of mine. What I'm thinking, is going I've on? I've included a few friend of mine. I'm gonna get to these guys in a second, so, and I won't be weird so about them. I'm, I'm not listening to Ethan, but Mo. So the other dude is awkward, and he looks away, because they're having like this stare off. But Mo never backed down from the stare off, as you'll see. Them to okay, you gotta let it play. Okay, I'm sorry, you guys. No, don't go back. No, we watched it too many times. Okay, I'm done. Check it out. Sorry. You know Check it out. Drill? We got a new day, new run, new pot, new energy, new wisdom. Out in the heart of Brooklyn, root of New York City, huh? I've been heading down to the church and down to the pier with a few friend of mine. But I'm thinking, I've included a few friend of mine. I'm going to get to these guys in a second and I won't be weird about it. I'm going to introduce them to you. I've been getting a lot of confusion to what this raw, this regular ritual is. But anyways, I got a dentist to the front of me, huh? Yeah. I got OB. I got Andy Ricci to the rare -er OB. Hey, listen, what happened to your brother Boone all? Yeah. It was with Johnny. Yeah, we were tap dancing. 
And let me tell you something. You're so like the new me move. A call about 4 a.m. Very Oh, the ring click? Happen, <laughs> he gets super huh? violent with the ring. Sometimes I'm afraid he's going to break it. But the regular ritual, he throws the spoon. That's my favorite. Eli, I'm not trying to pause this shit. <laughs> Last time I got a mother calling my phone, ringing my line was about two months ago. She tells me she sees Johnny and Bruno tap dancing on a beefcake under the Verzano Bridge. And I says to myself, so for Daisy, I hang up the phone right then and there. I got Johnny, Johnny, you been good to your mother? I've been great to my mother. We got G-Man, the man with the game. I got Kenny Caruso. To the left of G, the homie doesn't know what's going on at all. Party, huh? <laughs> and Zinx. <laughs> Come on, forget about it. Cheers, Zinx. And I got the one and only Mo to the left of me. My Look at Mo, he's buddy. all over that guy. Yeah, you been good to your mother? I've been good. You been talking to me nice or what? You been talking nice or what? <laughs> but there's been a lot of Dude, they did a switcheroo where Mo's the crazy one now. <laughs> Why does he say it twice? <laughs> I feel like they totally switched. <laughs> They're so weird. Like if you throw back to the beach pranks when Ethan is like scaring Mo. Yeah. And Ethan is like circling he's around He's circling him. Mo and staring him down and being like, uh, what did he say? What did he say to him? Now, I, let me pull that up for reference because you guys um, have to know about the role reversal. Dude has, I guarantee you, you will not find this level of in-depth analysis of the Bradbury <laughs> brothers anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> like what the hell? We are like we are we are historians of the Bradburys, Beach Pranks, Bradbury Brothers. Now the end of this video. Um, Why can I not remember? It's killing me. We always like reference. You that. bet we did. You bet we did. Right. <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> so he, but he's like well, visibly like, angry. That's the part the that's great. Yeah. Here, watch this. We had so much fun filming this you video. Bet we did. <laughs> nice, right on that. If you guys want to watch the behind the scenes, and they start click. squirting him. <laughs> Don't spray me. Click right Don't here. Spray right me. here. The behind the scenes. Make sure you go. So, that, so he was the crazy, unpredictable one, but now I feel like Mo took that role. Ethan, you been good to your mother? I've been good. You've been talking to me nice or what? You've been talking nice or what? But there's been a lot of confusion. I don't know what's going on. Mo's fucking lost it. But with a brother like Ethan, it was only a matter of time. You've been talking nice or what? You've been talking nice? <laughs> it's like a record scratch. You have the same mother. They're brothers. <laughs> <laughs> so. I think it, it, they finally moved out of that grandma house. I don't think so. It's oh, right no, there's still the plastic, plastic yeah. even on the table. Yeah, no, there's plastic. Motherfuckers, what's the point of living in a house where plastic covers every goddamn thing? The table is covered in plastic. Like the the couches table? are covered in plastic. This appears to be covered in yeah. plastic. What is this, a crime scene or a goddamn living room? It's a Dexter. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, we goofed on them for that, like, five years ago. And, well, it's, I guess it's not their couch. What if it is their couch? I think it is, because look at that poster. Oh, you just put it over the painting. <laughs> the owl. <laughs> Are you guys still living at home? Man. You guys gotta move out. And they're bringing all these people over? That's, I was just about to... And he's saying that he's good to his mother? That ain't good to your that mother. That ain't good to the mother. Good point, Hila. Wow. Evidence to the contrary. <laughs> 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 but I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm amazed that he was able to pull together so many dudes for this nonsense, <laughs> you know? At 5.30 a.m. too, apparently. But anyway, they got the raw, so let's continue. As to what this raw is, what this regular ritual is, the raw is the... Uh most strongest, purest form of coffee formula out there. I'm on this mission because I feel like it helps with the thinking. Forget about it. What are you out of your rabbit and mind? Come on. So, what does he say? What are you out of your rab rabbit? Rabbit, uh, rabbit ass mind. That's what uh, I'm hearing. Oh, rabbit ass mind. It's it's intelligible. If there was a subtitle, it would say intelligible. Unintelligible. The opposite of intelligible. You're saying you can't understand it, right? Is intelli te is intelligible? <laughs> no, un unintelligible. <laughs> Come on, Ethan. Wait, Come on. Come on. It be, should be a subtitle it's under me right now that says unintelligible. <sighs> we need a fart mic like Tom and Christina. <laughs> I just farted, but you guys probably didn't hear it. Anyway. Oh, it smells so bad, though. Sometimes your farts just get that next notch of smell where you're like, woof. Your mother can smell it. <laughs> this is what we got going on over here, huh? 
I'm missing another cup. Who got my other cup? Andy, I seen you rob my cup. Let me get Why my is cup. Let me get this straight. Out of cups. These motherfuckers are driving around <laughs> and like Audi like hundred and fifty thousand dollar Audis, but they still live at their parents. They shoot at their parents' house. Nice. Yeah. Never touch my cup. Get a bottle. I'll be to the left of me, huh? Who you kidding? So we have the coffee already prepared. They don't have what we're looking for in that raw shop. We're gonna slam them with the regular ritual. You ready? As long as you're good. To oh, your what did that frame page. say? You you put it right. He hit it. Yeah. It's not in my document though. Why isn't it in my document? What I is time, this I time stamp it, to it. It's not really hitting? that profound. He hit it. He hit us with a. With a hidden frame here. It was at like one two fifty or something, right? We're gonna slam. With the regular bit, yeah, ritual. It's right after that. You ready? So he had a. Oh, oh fuck it. You can just no, no, no. Just seek with um. It's not a period and uh. Comma. Or oh, thank llama. you. That's nice. Oh, you're you're, bro. You're a legend. <laughs> he says, "Dear future Bradbury, this is a uh, a secret frame. Allow <laughs> me not to get attached to anything that isn't written for me, and grant me patience in times of hardship." And raw we, we trust. I think so. That's a hidden message. It's very strange. <laughs> it's just one frame, right? One it's frame, baby. What does that mean? Actually, it might be more than one frame. It's I actually it's several. More. One, two, three frames. Yeah. So, because you definitely notice it. You, yeah, you, you notice you, it. You, you notice it. Anyway. As long as you're good to your mother, got fish. Yeah, but you gotta understand the raw to the raw is out there. Yeah. What do you think of Dennis' style, Lila? <laughs> <laughs> I love Dennis, too, man. <laughs> Such a legend. He really is becoming the silent legend, actually, lately. Dennis? Yeah, just because he goes along with them. That's what I'm saying. He's no right or die. Asked. Bro, you know you gotta hit him with that three minute and a half <laughs> intro. <laughs> That's the hallmark of the regular. You had got to hit him with that Bradbury intro at oh, at seventy five percent in. That's what makes the regular the schmegala. Love it. So this is my another thing with the like epic B roll and then just like cut to an iPhone. <laughs> like epic Listen, city Andy, shots. Johnny, come over. Here. You too. Oh yeah. I've gotten a call from your mother's. Hmm. Not good. You know what I'm saying? Be good to your mother, Scott Beach. Wait, Beach. what'd they say? I haven't gotten a call from your mother in about a month. Oh, that so contradicts what he's been good to. Great. Huh? Come over here. Kisses. Lots of kisses. And that's that, Scott Beach. Lots of kisses. Here, Lots of tender kisses. You get it going, Johnny. Come over here. He said he got a call, but then he said he didn't get a call. Hmm. I wonder who called it then. Bradbury taking the lead like a reservoir dogs to the nearest Starbucks. Buckle up. I like how he calls it the raw shop. Yeah, of course. <laughs> how you doing? Good? So. Let me get the regular. The regular. The regular schmegula. Angles, they got angles. Do you have that? The regular schmegula? Let me get a large. A large? Large. Large. You want just a large hot coffee, that's it. No, a regular schmegula. Okay, we don't have that. So, well, hold on. I'm, I'm confused now. Because the raw is just black coffee. Yeah. And he's at Starbucks asking for the regular, which as far as I know is just a black coffee. Yeah. I guarantee you that is what you want. She's like a regular large coffee. That's the raw. But then she calls it coffee, and he's like, nah. Okay, it's a terminology issue. Because she almost served him, yeah, but then she clarified. <laughs> but I wonder, if it, I wonder if the video would have just ended amicably. <laughs> she just handed him a black coffee, you know? But I'm like, I'm like, Ethan, that's what you want. That's raw, a regular coffee. Yes. That's the regular. You know, you brought your own cup. You're ready to go. No? You sure? They do have it. That's what's so frustrating to me. Ethan, they have it. You ordered it. Forget about it. Are you kidding me? Here we go. 
<laughs> I think uh, Johnny, Andy, <laughs> will you get it? Here we go. Get it. The fear sets in. Dennessy, <laughs> board shorts and polo. What's the point of bringing the coffee machine? It's not plugged into anything. Because it's epic. We are uncomfortable the manager. Where's the generator? You said you wasn't talking at night, huh? He's not good to his mother. He's not good to his mother. The manager picks up the phone and is calling 911. Watch this. <laughs> get it, Bradbury. You know. He can really get a good scream. Yeah. I was just gonna say, yelling in public is kind of his thing. He's got a talent. The manager is on the phone with the police. <laughs> the, the cashier is just laughing and confused. Everyone's kind of just confused. Johnny Andy! Mo! Pick it up, huh? Chase. 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 To the raw. This day on moving forward. They've got, they've got black yeah, coffee. Are we getting it going? Got fish? So again, there's... Oh, this is covered. <laughs> One of them was super wet. So again, there's no intrinsic <laughs> entertainment value to anyone who doesn't... I mean, the original one doesn't have any intrinsic value until, I mean, until we found it. Yeah. It's like an ore that you need to refine. It's like, have you seen a gold nugget, a raw gold nugget? It's does it's not a beautiful mm -hmm. or a diamond even is a better example. A raw diamond just looks like a chunk of stone. Mm -hmm. But you need someone to find the diamond to polish it and to chisel it uh -huh. until it's beautiful. To bring out its luster. A diamond in the rough is right. true is is what the expression, you know, means. And I really do think the regular should be called the rough. Because <laughs> it's a diamond in the rough. And at this point, but I, I have a lot of confu I have confusion now, Ethan, because you've been very consistent with the terminology. They have the raw, yeah. one. And two, if you're going to tell me that your coffee is more raw that you brought from Long Island <laughs> that's been stale for like two hours than a Starbucks. That's what I'm saying. Where is the generator? I mean, you got. That's right, Ela. Bring <laughs> a, bring a, a gas powered generator. You gotta plug the coffee machine to something. <laughs> Yo. To keep the regular hot. So here's what Cup we ish. here's what we need for part three, uh, Ethan. <laughs> bring a generator into the Starbucks. You gotta pull the string and get the gas, the the gasoline motor generating heat. <laughs> and then you warm the pot of regular. <laughs> and then forget about it. You know what I like to see? I like to see him set up outside of Starbucks and try to sell it. With the gas powered generator. There's a lot of. You got any other ideas? I'm sure they're listening. I feel like some people will buy it. Fucking God help them. But yeah, I think you're right. Someone might recognize him. You have any other ideas? I like that idea with the you generator. You have to bring more cups than five. You always That's have true. five. That's true. Um, hmm. Ethan, what else? I think if you shaved your head and eyebrows, it would be funny. <laughs> no, he's <laughs> no, on that uh, dra Dragon Ball Z style. That's true. He is kind of gone Super Saiyan. What can we do? I mean, that's that's a good part. I think three. Danny C needs an upgrade of some kind. I think he's proven himself enough. I think Danny C needs to be walking around in like a giant cup costume. <laughs> you remember uh, Aqua Teen <laughs> Hunger Force, the cup? <laughs> Like he should go yeah. dressed as a giant cup. That was master shake. Thank you, Dan. I don't think he would. He's above that. Yeah. He's a director. He's Spielberg. <laughs> Danny Seberg. That doesn't work. Dennis Berg. Um. Dennis Bay. <laughs> Let's move it on. That's a lot. That's a lot of regular. <laughs> Um, we have a lot of fun on the H3 podcast, do we not? <laughs> we learn, we listen, we grow, we thrive here together. If you're listening, I just want to say, here we are. If who is listening? I am the listeners. Anyone. <laughs> I don't know that anyone's listening if to this. They, if they turn it off by now? Yeah, I'm saying most people are not listening at this point. 
It's incredible that people listen, though, isn't it? It is. I still don't <laughs> really think about it that like actual people listen listen to this. Right. Well, I don't have any actual proof. <laughs> like you see the numbers, but well, no, that's not true. I've, I've run into people who were listening yeah. as they said hi. So that's my proof. That's my that only is, proof. Did you look at the phone though? I didn't actually hear it. Yeah. Nor did I look at the phone to confirm it was what they were listening to. So, we should talk about something else though. Let's conspiracy. move it on. Yeah. So, man spreading chairs. Man spreading <laughs> chairs. Now let's move it on to something even more important. <laughs> Get a load of this lady. Look at her smarmy dumb face. You're so stupid. You're such a, you're so annoying. So I'm going to show her, I'm going to set up her whole argument. What? Do I have a problem? Did I say something wrong, Ela? <laughs> a little too hard. Well, look how smug she is about these stupid fucking chairs. So, I read the article. Okay. Wow, Mrs. read the article. What? And Are you in a woman's chair right now? <laughs> <laughs> I Go just, ahead. to say to her, I'm going to be on her side for a moment. Okay. She doesn't take herself that seriously. She said she does see the humor in it. Oh. And it was meant to start a conversation about women taking up more space in life. That's interesting that she... It's uh, a metaphor. Yeah. Because the article, the poem right. seemed to be very serious about how she won awards. Yes. She did win an award, but the work is not to start selling these chairs at Starbucks now. It's... Uh, it's an art piece. It's a design piece, but with more, like, to start a conversation. Okay. Are you done? Yeah. I just mansplained <laughs> you. <laughs> Look at her. Look how smarmy she is. Her arms are crossed. <laughs> just like her, my legs should be at all times. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's a fair point. It's good that we, we don't paint with too broad of a brush here. Right, Hila? Yeah, no. I, I see both sides on this one. What? Because I... I can okay, understand. As an art piece, fine. Yeah, that's but all I'm saying. But but people are taking this seriously. Exactly. Let's. But and also, it's more fun. It's more interesting if we take it from that route. <laughs> we can't be so reasonable that this show's boring. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get out of here with the stop with this reason and logic and fairness, Hila. It's not entertaining. You've been good to your mother. I've been great to my mother. Okay. We should call our moms. <laughs> you should check in on my mom. Has Ethan been good to you? <laughs> He's been great to me. <laughs> The end of man spreading student fed up with men infringing on her public space wins national design award for creating chair that restricts how they sit. Now, who the fuck? I mean, somebody gave her an award. So what it is, is that the woman's chair forces the woman to sit with her legs open and the man's chair forces the man to sit with his legs closed. Mm hmm. So I don't really understand this solving problem because they're just they're passing the problem all over to women <laughs> yeah. who, ha who don't even have a preference to sit with their legs open. And uh, how many times do I need to explain this? Why don't so, why does nobody listen to me? Men have a dick and a balls. There's there's <laughs> pr precious thing. There's all sensitive issues between our legs that, that, that restrict us from sitting. Do you understand that women sit with their legs closed because it's more comfortable and men? sit with their legs open because it's more comfortable you have a vagina you idiot it nothing hangs out it's easy it would be great if i could sit with my legs closed but it's it's not convenient especially a fat chubby guy i got huge thighs there's no space for anything down there do you understand Can you no open? they won't no, wait, just... they won't even acknowledge that though Ela. they never they won't even acknowledge oh you want to be I'm not fair saying anything i want you to open the article yes because the <laughs> They have pictures of people sitting on the chairs, and they oh, look right. so sad. I want you to show it. Okay, thank you, Eli. You're on my side, finally. <laughs> thank you, Eli. Scroll down. Yeah, here. There's a few. I mean, the woman looks ridiculous. Yeah, that's... Okay, okay. This is how men sit. How, how does it feel? You don't have a penis, and this bro <laughs> has been castrated. If I see a guy like this, he has been castrated or he has a micro penis. I mean, you have to you have to consciously as a man. You have to consciously stomach the discomfort to sit like that. Okay? I mean, you have to make a statement. between your legs. 
You do have I'm something. I'm telling you, <laughs> if I sit with my legs apart, it's very uncomfortable. Do you want me to describe it to you? Nobody mentions these in these fucking articles and videos. Hello? Hello? I don't understand why no one acknowledge it. Let can me you, describe. Can we see that? I want you to yes. go down more. Wow. That, okay. Then <laughs> go down another one. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, these are entertaining. You're right. <laughs> this one. Oh it looks God. so sad. Well, look at her. Like, like close your legs. <laughs> why, why is her like so wide and open? Close your legs. You don't need that much. Space. No, I personally, when I was pregnant, I couldn't sit with my legs crossed. Uh, yes. And I didn't like it. I prefer to. Wow. So, th as I was saying, you're more comfortable with your legs closed. Yeah. Let me hear Tan from BuzzFeed and all the other feminists creating mansplaining chairs, man spreading chairs. My legs are closed right now. This is how you want me to sit for all of our viewers. Thank you. Here, you can see me in the wide. Okay, here's what's happening. Tan and everybody, listen the fuck up because I'm only going to explain this once. My balls <laughs> right now, I can't hold this very long, are being smashed between my thighs. <laughs> Okay? You've got to take ties. Yes. Doesn't help. <laughs> it does not help either. <laughs> They're being smashed. They're one, my right testicle is being smashed in the middle of my thighs. <laughs> it's hot, and it's, there's a lot of pressure. And I, I, even, even after this amount of time I've been speaking, it's starting to hurt, and I have to let up. The top testicle is being squished up. <laughs> top? Yeah, up. <laughs> It's okay. it's also very uncomfortable. The penis <coughs> rests comfortably at the top. It's a <laughs> it's a testicle issue. Mm -hmm. Use your imagination. They hang down, and when it's hot as it is between the thighs, they hang even more. Do you know why? Let me give you some male biological lessons because apparently you don't understand anything about being a man. The testicles are required to be held at a certain temperature for the semen to be viable. Ela. Mm. That's why they hang when it's hot. That's because they need to be cool. And when you force me to sit like that, guess who's not getting pregnant? Oh, well, maybe that's what you wanted the whole time. All men to die <laughs> and be castrated. Okay? okay. And so, you know, all these fancy chairs and all these uh, BuzzFeed videos and all these TED Talks and all these sad, pathetic little men who are sitting. Uh, look, how, look, at, look at this photograph. Like, she's so free. Sky. And he's on a blue background. Little bitch boy. So I'd rather die than sit in that chair. Look at this. Look at this guy. How do you live with yourself, bro? You betrayed your your gender. <laughs> you betrayed your gender. Look at this. Wow. Oh, so okay. So here you've heard all the arguments. You've seen all they have to say. So, now allow me. What? Is, what? You? Should I read these bullet points? All I want to say is that. She have received a lot of explicit messages from men who seem to be under the impression that she's trying to castrate them and that she hates all men. Don't do which that. Which couldn't be further from the truth. Please don't. She's if you do that, you are <laughs> even worse than she is. If you go out of your way. Okay, now that I've gone extreme one direction, let me go the other way. If you go out of your way to target this woman, to find who she is and send oh, her a message. Oh, I thought you were telling me don't do that. Okay. No, if you are one of these guys. No, thank Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Thank you. So, like, it, it, uh, that goes and finds her and sends her a message. Yeah. You are, you should be castrated. Do you understand how pathetic and insane that is, bro? I mean, that's so insane. She's we can make fun of her and goof <laughs> about it, but if you're going to actually send her, if it if it upsets you that much, dude, you should be castrated. <laughs> I mean, that's so disturbing and weird, bro. Uh, I, you are way worse, way worse than her just making a stupid chair that we can goof yeah. on. So Please. that is why it's, I wanted to show her side as well. Yeah, it is important to acknowledge that. And because she, she said, I don't take myself too seriously because for my work, I really wanted to be both important and thought provoking while also being engaging and funny. I think humor is really interesting tool in order to tackle social issues. Good. So then she's really going to appreciate my counterpoint. <laughs> she probably would. <laughs> That's really actually I have a whole topic I want to talk about these pathetic guys 
we'll do it on Friday. Yeah. I found this channel called, um, Oh God, what is it? I don't remember. It's some incel. I call it the incel manifesto. You know what's crazy? Like the the ideas held within are so disturbing. And I watched one video, and YouTube was like recommending me this really like if you're watching this shit, you pretty much not only hate women, but I feel like no, one hundred percent hate women. But it's like way beyond that. Beyond you know? that, yeah. But this. But we'll talk about MGTOW, MGTOW, or some shit yeah. like that. Oh, or that's it's, what they call themselves. It's, it's men going their own way. Is what oh, the is. thank MGTOW. you. I was wondering what that acronym. You was. know, and I just found the video in your doc that you're talking about, and you're right. It's so crazy. Oh my the fucking God. YouTube algorithm. Just I just going to this. I haven't even watched it yet. Just clicking on it, all of the suggestions on the sidebar are like more incel shit. And this it's is like wild. We and, watched it together, and I I really couldn't believe it was real. Yeah. And it has a ton of views, tons of positive engagement. So people are, and I'm like, I was just listening in total shock and disbelief because, I mean, I've only, I've been surrounded by reasonable dudes my whole life. And while we joke about mansplaining and this stuff, apparently there's a lot of guys out there that I guess think that I'm speaking to them and I am not mm -hmm. because this big <laughs> towel shit is Disturbing. I cannot believe anyone actually believes this stuff. It's cringy. It's, it's, cringy. it's, it's like, no, it's not cringy. cringy. It's, it's scary. Like scary. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. scary. And so, so, dude, trust me, it's not like that. You know. Yeah. I can't believe how far these guys take it. But then, yeah, it's like it's like YouTube algorithms recommending alt right shit. I mean, they're they are. Whoa, this MGTOW shit is fucking men going their own way. I guess if that way is like, what way is that? The wrong way. I I don't even know. We'll talk about it because yeah, it's get into hard that. to like for people to understand what we're talking about since we haven't shown anything. But at, but at any rate, I but, disavow that with with extreme prejudice. So to counter her point, I have only one simple gif <laughs> to show you. Okay little clever engineer and all of your co-conspirators out there who think that man spreading is an issue I present you with the one gif one short little video clip to undo all all of your studies people hate him for this one gif this is a man <laughs> on stage who sits down crosses his legs <laughs> Man, I've watched this so many times. This crack kills me. <laughs> <laughs> he sits down on stage. <laughs> he crosses his legs and he smashes his nuts so hard that his face shoots up in such shock and pain. I mean, he. <laughs> He amazes himself at how <laughs> how much he could. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying, ladies? Okay. Okay, lady who made just watch this. Look at the sweet <laughs> man. <laughs> he throws his head back in such pain. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face. I mean, Elo, tell me, what's your reaction to seeing this? Does it I feel bad for him? Right. <laughs> Are you gonna tell this poor man to stop man spreading? Like to have such a <laughs> to have such a reaction? <laughs> it's gonna be so painful. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I ever <laughs> felt such pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Every time it surprised me. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> Every time it surprised me. And you know, the man silently suffers. <laughs> Nobody on his left or right, nobody but this cameraman <laughs> knew what happened. <laughs> This poor, <laughs> sweet old man trying to mind his own business 
and minimize the space he's occupying because there's <laughs> other dudes next to him that are spreading their legs out too because they also have nuts. Well, not that guy. What? The guy on his left has it's got no problem. <laughs> well, homie, <laughs> I think homie is due for some new pants. <laughs> I think he packed on a couple. Well, I don't know what's going. To be frank, <laughs> also he's older. Those those yeah. shit droops low, man. Those those well, things keep drooping. Too. I mean, the guy on the left is like thin. he's packed in. But but the point is is that I mean this could happen to anyone, <laughs> any one of us. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I can't even imagine it for me. Making that face, what would have to happen oh, yeah. to, to to invite that reaction? It's like somebody <laughs> stabbed him in the right through his body. <clears throat> but I mean, what really more do I need to offer to you in, in, in rebuttal? I feel like you know, at the national debate team, she comes with all this paperwork and all these legal documents, and I say. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I present this and I rest my case. <laughs> this guy is not a man spreader. He's just a dude with some well droop well low droopers <laughs> who fucking sat on his nuts wrong. You know? <laughs> Look how much pain this poor fucker's in. You get you telling me there's a chance that you're gonna sit on the subway with your little vagina and no issues, no problem between your legs. You need empathy. <laughs> I mean, women have, they complain and they complain about men all the time and a lot of time they're right. But you want to talk about empathy, you will, you have to acknowledge we have testicles. And they're delicate. That's the problem that they, um, they make feel, they make men feel like these women really hate them. Hmm. And I think it's a shame because there is a lot to complain about with women men issues right so i think it's a shame that they make it so like they make it ridiculous they make it even more dividing because they go at men so strong that the only reaction is to be like you know you're you just hate me you want you can't have a serious conversation yeah. about it when this is the counter point <laughs> But that's a really good point, Elon. and that's why I love you, because you are smart and thoughtful and reasonable, and you you really are just so fantastic. <laughs> and you have never <laughs> once given me any trouble about me manspreading you. I don't really have a problem with it. What is your legitimate problem? Do you say, well, what's one off the top of your head, if you could, an, an issue that we should be discussing between genders? I think a real one that goes... Uh, kind of less noticed is sometimes it is harder for uh, if you're like a woman in a s and more men around you and everyone's having conversation sometimes it can really be harder to be heard yes that's very true that's a real one that I I've experienced I, I don't know if it's like that for everyone I think that's a good generalization and I found myself doing that to you because you're well, for whatever reason, I agree. I, 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 have, I, I find myself frequently doing that and then having to consciously pull mm -hmm. myself back. Yeah. But also, you don't want to create an environment where people are, like, afraid to talk. I think what it is know? is just being conscientious. Yeah. You have to be—you're being more thoughtful. Yeah. Be more thoughtful of, of not just, I think, women, but people who are less— I mean, women tend to be less assertive. I think that's why— and I think that'll piss off some feminists, but I mean, I'm sorry. That's just, I feel like that's a biological. It's just different. Women can be assertive, but yeah, of it's course. in a different way. So, so, like you said, a lot of times they'll get drowned out in a conversation. Or mm -hmm. I guess what people would say, maybe like Susan, the CEO of YouTube, would say is that men, she, she, or men example, cutting her off a lot. I'll give or, you another example. Uh, sometimes when we both handle stuff like business wise. Uh -huh. I feel like if something came from you, people will take us more seriously versus if it came from me. Well, when it comes to negotiating or when it comes to like dealing with manufacturers abroad. Well, sometimes yeah. sometimes they even ask to talk to you when they don't even know that I'm more involved. Yeah, we had partners in Pakistan who wouldn't even talk to Ela. Yeah. So oh, that's fucked. They yeah. well because they didn't take her seriously. They would when it, but I told them I they would email me, go around Ela, and I'd be like, talk to Ela. Yeah, I'd be like, what the fuck, dude? 
Yeah, spe- yeah, that's especially <laughs> ironic. Just knowing you, I mean, Ela is extremely business savvy. Like <laughs> it's ri- that's really ridiculous that they won't want to go around her. But I see what you mean, and I think that's more of an issue of of education. Mm-hmm. I think growing up, it helps to teach young boys like that. Uh, I th- even more than just literally sitting down and being like, "Son, you have to remember. Right. You have to by example." Um, yeah, by example. By, but you by have to how be. Your behavior. Yeah, you have to sometimes listen more. Yeah. And give other people an opportunity to, like I, myself, I I can be very, especially in a setting like this. Uh, I don't know, assertive of my voice, right? And so it's been a learning process to learn mm. to to allow you to communicate. Yeah. In, in, in parallel to me. But you do lead the show more, so it, it is. Sometimes it makes more sense for you to anyway true, be the. True, but there needs you know, to be a balance, but, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm but very... I think uh, <clears throat> the talk about feminism and all that, I feel like it is totally just leading by example. And <coughs> right. I think action instead of just talking. Like, I think it's pretty cool that Teddy Fresh, <clears throat> all ninety percent of our employees are actually female. And it's not, we didn't make the conscious decision. That's just, we just hired the best people that we found. We only have one male employee. Yeah. Well, actually two with Ben. Oh, right, Ben, yeah. But. I think that, you know, it's funny. We didn't, we didn't make the decision like, I want female. No, that, and that's ridiculous. Or, you know. Well, also, and maybe this breaks the stereotype, our lead designer is a male. I don't know. You probably expect. No, actually, designers are. (coughs) Is that a male or into? That's interesting. But the thing is, you know, we've also noticed, I feel like in the world of entertainment or at least new media, I feel like <clears> you <throat> in particular are a, are a, a, the perfect example of a strong, independent woman who has her own achievements and her own accomplishments under her belt. And whenever you see people getting accolades and recognition for being like a feminist or whatever, it's always these typical people that have made a super loud mm-hmm. and they try to make their whole identity about feminism yeah. and empowering women. But what I don't know what they're doing exactly yeah. other than talking about it. So but I feel talk. like Yeah, and, 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 and while and while you are actually living a true the life of a true, powerful, independent woman, you don't nobody's go, even gonna recognize you for doing that. Because because I don't talk about that's it. because you're doing what's actually impactful, which is living it instead of just mm-hmm. you know screaming about how much of a feminist and tweeting about all these. No, you, you know what I'm saying. No one will ever acknowledge a true that yeah. true hustle. But I think you you transcend even the the like you said. We're not we don't think about things in that. What the way that we and you think about things is is really the way that I think we all need to strive to is that on by merits. Yeah. Not not by. Not not based on what outcome you want, Mm -hmm. but based on the merits itself. But that's not progressive enough, apparently, because you need to make chairs that force people to sit like this. Got a load of this guy. Well, I want to recognize you. I I want to recognize you, Ela. <laughs> you are a strong, independent woman. You're you're amazing. Thank you. That's what I always loved about you from the beginning. Independent, super intelligent, grounded. I don't feel super intelligent. I don't. Well, I mean, who does really? <laughs> I mean, who does really? <laughs> I you, guess if you feel that way, you're it's fucking kind of a problem. weirdo. <laughs> People, I mean, look, people always have throughout my life said that I they think I'm intelligent. And I'm only saying that as anecdotal. I feel like a fucking idiot. Mm. I swear to God, I don't feel intelligent. Okay. I know that if I, I do took think a, you're intelligent. I know if I took an IQ test, I would score very low. Mm. I feel like I'm sure I would like barely get over 100. <laughs> I'm not that smart. I don't know why I give off that impression. I'm just not that smart. But anyway... Here I am making about me. How dumb I am. But you are. You're, you're so capable and you're so willing to go your own way and you're so strong. 
and you're so you're not swayed by 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 like uh, perception and 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 cultural things. You've always been very much your own person, and I just I uh, you know yeah I think your all the success you you have is all just from your your strength and and independence. Well, thank you, and it's always been a teamwork with us. So you've always enabled me to pursue all this stuff. So. <laughs> of course, dude. that's what it's all about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on. I think what it is. I actually, growing up, I've always like, I've seen my mom work. She was a stay-at-home mom for a while, but uh, mostly with my siblings, not with me. And then I've seen her always work. And then when I wanted something, we w- she would be like, "Okay, this month I can buy you." one pair of jeans i always wanted like the brands like mm-hmm. i prefer to buy less but spend more mm-hmm. <clears throat> even though we didn't really have a lot of money <clears throat> so she would be like on the 15 i get paid and this is how much i can spend on you so on the 15 we'll go and whatever you want but you get one thing that's awesome <laughs> but i've always seen her work and the what comes of it right and i've always i've always had this thought like i'm gonna be I'm going to earn money for myself so I can buy whatever I want. I'm not going to have some guy, you know, giving me money and me uh, yeah, of course. living at his. Um, so that hit, that's hit. always been in my mind since being like a kid. Yeah. Because your mom led by example. Mm-hmm. Your mom came from a very traditional household and she decided she was going to enter the workforce mm-hmm. with ver- with no qualifications. Yeah. And just sl- and earn her own <clears throat> keep in a very conservative household. Your dad yeah. probably didn't even want her to work. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Your dad didn't even want her to work. <laughs> and the funny thing, not I mean funny, but at at the end, towards like my my dad's last years, she was the only one actually working and providing. <laughs> Isn't that the best? It's like motherfucker didn't even want her working, and here she is supporting his mm-hmm. ass. But that's you know. That's the, that's a real strong woman who but, yeah. who breaks convention to do what's best for her and she she led by example and that's yes. the best lesson you can say words are f- w- words are seriously wind like you can have all the wisdom and say all the right things but it's it it's at, it will go out one ear and mm-hmm. out the other it, yeah. it is it is weightless it is no, it means nothing in the face of actually living an example I mean, that's what it's all about for kids. I think I always wanted a stronger... My mom is strong in some ways, but she also went out and made a good living and worked and supported herself, which was good, which was a really good example, Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Which is probably why I favor someone like that, but... Moreover, my dad was always just such a dick to her all the time and very demeaning to her of me growing up, like... He, like, she doesn't know how to use the remote, so instead of just helping her, it turns into this whole thing about, like, he's treating her like she's an idiot. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, is that, and that, and that, and that, and that, and that. And I guess you can learn, you know, one of two ways, right? Yeah. And I never wanted to, um... <clears throat> one of the best things I ever heard was the best thing a man can do for his kids is to respect their mother. And I don't feel like my dad ever really respected my mom. And I feel like it was, it really was uh, not a, not healthy as a young man to, to see that. Mm-hmm. Somehow I came out of it with, with what I think is the right idea. Because I've always been attracted to women that I have a deep respect for. Mm. So I think I was look, actively looking for a relationship unlike theirs. Um, they're still together, happily yeah. married. Yeah, they're not that serious. Yeah, but they're they are, <clears throat> they are like loving couple. It's not like they're. It not. used to be worse, but my <clears throat> but again, so they somehow my mom, she's crazy too. You know, like th- these people are fucking insane, especially back in the day. Like God, but you really just words are worthless, man. They so yeah. are worthless. You have to just you have to live it. To teach it. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have to speak a single word. In short, 
Be good to your mother. Be good to your mother. And in, in short, uh, thank you to TMZ. <laughs> <clears throat> a lot of tangents today. <laughs> Is this real? Somebody tell me, I saw this image of the Air Force training. I was going to ask you the same thing. <clears throat> so the Air Force is apparently training for the Area 51 invasion. Is, how do we find out if this is real? So here's a slide. Some, one of these air, guys in a military outfit is giving a PowerPoint presentation to other military personnel. It says, terms to know, Naruto running. The act of running like Japanese anime characters, Naruto. Uz, Uzumaki, they even got the last name. In which a person runs very fast with their torso forward and arms back. And the instructor is demonstrating with his arms back and his to- torso forward. So, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it again, I feel like there's no way this is real. Well, Dan, do you have an info on this? this? Yeah, funny. so I, I, I did find an insight on Reddit uh, <clears throat> of somebody, you know, it is Reddit, so let's take it with a grain of salt. But somebody claiming to be in the military and what they uh, speculated it probably was is I guess they do training exercises about how to give a briefing and take it seriously. Um, and they purposely pick really absurd things. Mm. So he gave as an example when <laughs> he was in the what military, they made them do a presentation about like they're about to go to war with an army of vegans. Mm-hmm. And like they had to like not laugh and like treat it as if it were a real thing. Mm-hmm. So he was speculating that they're using this as one of those examples. But the opportunity, because I also saw in the comments that this picture wasn't on the internet previous to the Area 51 page. Oh, well, why would... It could be Photoshop. That's why they would do it, though, That's right? why they because did it. Because of the Area 51 thing. Right. So, the, so it was a timely presentation. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm... Either sh- way, I think sure it's real. They for sure been talking about the Area 51 thing, because uh, I've seen reports that the military, you know... They, despite it being a giant mm-hmm. meme, they have to take it seriously. <laughs> because, like, yeah, at least yeah. 50 people are going to die trying to get in there. <laughs> right, exactly. My so. brother will be there to capture it all. <laughs> um, my brother should be a good drone. Oh, God, he'd get murdered. <laughs> no drones. Um, but, it, but I think it is real one way or the other. I think the photo is real. I think the context <laughs> okay. is, yeah. is potentially not real. Yeah. <laughs> but either way, it's fantastic. Yeah. And that somebody somehow, like, I wonder if this is top secret, these photos. <laughs> is this official top secret business? <laughs> I love how the guy in the bottom, he's like, he's really, you know, he's <laughs> just taking it all in. Yeah, he's focusing. <laughs> oh, my God. So there you have it. The military is preparing for the Area 51 raid happening September 20th, 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., ending succinctly at 6 a.m., just in time for some uh, pancakes and eggs. <clears throat> Cats movie trailer. We always we have so much to cover. <laughs> and there's too much to talk about, guys. Yeah. There's too. I have too much here. It's already been an hour and a half. I have too much to talk about. <laughs> Guys, there's way too much to talk about. <laughs> what have we talked about so far? I need a thumbnail. Do we have a th- something that we can, you know, title and thumbnail if we end it now? Because it's been an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> we've talked about TMZ. We've talked about Ethan Bradbury. And we've we talked didn't about talk about anything. Man, man spreading. spreading. That's pretty much it. Dude, we didn't cover we any about Zach. ground. Did Zach. Talk- <laughs> what am I going to put Zach's dumb face in the... <laughs> <laughs> realtor wars I'll put a picture of the two realtors <laughs> <laughs> what can we do for a thumbnail I mean the, the mansplating chair is pretty good that one is hard to put it's, in a thumbnail yeah well you'd have to get a really good title like um, <laughs> um women proposes c- castrating men <laughs> um fuck man there's what would you title this episode right now title it that we're going to get in the algorithm with those uh men going their own way videos yeah but i'm talking talk about it <laughs> no, i'm saying if you if the titles that we castrating right? mm. women want to castrate men be good to your mother that's right <laughs> what if it's see you no know, people are going to click for ethan bradbury i think it's got to be the man spreading chairs mm-hmm. yeah that's the only topic with with uh teeth here and it's a good one how about this ethan destroys the man spreading argument which is true. I think I do. But that's such a Ben Shapiro, ben Shapiro title. Ethan, yeah. Well, I mean, 
but it's good. Those videos have a lot of views. <laughs> and the other hand, you know. Can we can we all agree that if we do it, we're doing it ironically? Yeah, always. And so you get that's what Hitler said about killing the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> just ironic. I didn't mean it. It's just ironic. Yeah, that's a that's a license to murder. You can do say anything you want as long as it's ironic. Ethan ends. Ethan ends the man spreading epidemic. Okay. Once and for all, must watch. I can go with ends. I have a problem with destroys. Ethan annihilates. <laughs> That's a long word. Now, th is this good content or what? <laughs> Getting a little peek behind the scenes. Yeah, it is kind of interesting, though, we... probably. We could even highlight this. this That's how meta how you can get with it. <laughs> Ethan and Ela think of a thumbnail title. <laughs> <laughs> That's how meta we can get. For real. <laughs> this is a banger of a highlight. Now, if we go with this title, <laughs> what do you put in the thumbnail? Because those chairs are not going to look Oh, you good. know, the Naruto running in the military would be funny, the thumbnail. Hmm. But we talked about that for like two minutes. <laughs> yeah, the chair, we would have to get creative because the chair. You know what we should get? Just a random picture of men spreading. Like a good one. And, and he's on a noose hanging. <laughs> Ethan annihilates the man spreading argument. Ethan, but maybe it should be a parody, like a parody of Ben Shapiro. Ethan destroys mansplaining argument. And the yeah, picture could be... we all agree that it's a parrot. Okay, yeah, of course. We all agree. Uh, no problem. <laughs> and then the, I, I think she's pretty smarmy. So it could be her with the women's chair and men's chair. If you blow that up, you could probably get a better pictures because this one's real low res, like a close-up. Oh, then maybe a picture me. of the people sitting on those chairs. Oh, that's pretty depressing. <laughs> yeah. I think we got something there. I mean, the alternative that I wanted to do for the title, but we haven't gotten time to get there, is the um, the ice cream looking challenge, which I think is good. But we can talk about that on Friday. We really got to move on Friday because we have so much to cover, <laughs> dude. I'm that's it. Okay. On fr we're gonna have a long episode on Friday because I got to clear this list. Because we have fucking a lot, dude. Including, I've got like the incel manifesto. I've got all these Instagram food ones. Also, some things here are starting to get old, like the face app. The whoopsie daisy. Yeah, the face app. There's so, I'm, okay, we're doing like five hours. Or at least, it's going to be like three hour episode on Friday. Because we got to, let's just, I think what we need to do is just move. Mm -hmm. Just be like, boom, boom, boom. Move, baby. None of this tangent bullshit. Oh, women empowerment. Fsh, get real. <laughs> We're moving. <laughs> nice chat for another day. <laughs> All right. So are we good? Friday is business. Don't miss Friday's episode because we <laughs> mean business. Don't ask me how we're doing. Don't. None of this. None of this uh, chit chat. None of this how's your mother. And trust me, my mother been great. <laughs> Capish? Haven't heard from my mother. Haven't heard from your mother in two months. You've been good to your mother? He's almost too enthusiastic, though, when he's like, I've been great yeah. to my mother. It's like, whoa. <laughs> Don't be so good to your mother. It's getting weird, you know? I've been watching Fear Factor a lot. And there's this one episode where the mom and the son are, like, hugging and kissing all the oh time. God. I was like, not that good. Don't be and that good. And everyone around them acknowledged that they're being weird and they're still being all touchy. Like So weird. There wasn't a second that they weren't touching each other. And like the whole the, episode. The mom was, she was, she must have had him really young because she looked, she was attractive and she was wearing very little she and had big fake titties. Kept showing her, like, yeah, it's very strange. And he was probably like 18 and they were just embracing each other. Like, I feel like there's they almost. They looked like a couple. There's almost like, no chance that they don't, they're not. Being. They they had like the body language that a couple would like hugging and so if he was fucking his mom Do you think? The question is would they be more just uh, concealed with their affection right. or would they? Not be able to help it or would they think in their minds that it was okay? 
if they were fucking, I feel like that is how they would act. Because in, you have to be so twisted in your mind to do that. Mm. That I feel like maybe for them that is toned down. <laughs> Usually it's just... <laughs> maybe. I have no idea. You don't? <laughs> it's towards the end if anyone's curious. I watched every single episode of Fear Factor. Because with uh, Is this yeah. like new? No. no, 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 no. Is it like reruns they added of the Joe Rogan one? 160 yes. episodes, or like 157 episodes they added to Hulu, Haven't every single it. one. Uh. And because we're just, I'm in front, with Theodore I have the most and the least free time I've ever had in my life. It's very weird, yeah. So a lot of, t we're just feeding him, and you know, burping him, and trying to get him to go to sleep. And we're just sitting in front of the TV the whole day. So I've watched 157 episodes of Fear Factor since he's been born. Because you can't really watch good content because then you're not paying attention enough. Right. So you're wasting it. So, and you got to watch something that you can just kind of like look away and then look back and you're still not missing anything. Right. So Fear Factor is perfect. I mean, I loved it. <laughs> it was really interesting though because, so the show was canceled ultimately because the the first couple of seasons were like huge success, crazy ratings, uh, n a world phenomenon. Yeah, I used to watch it in Israel. And the ratings were falling off every season, falling off, falling off. And I, when I first started, I was like, how is that possible? The first episode is so shocking. I could not believe what I was seeing. The very first challenge in that first episode, they tie the contestants to the back of a fucking horse and drag their ass at full speed on the ground. On like a dirt, like rocky. And ground. they had they had to hold on to a rope for as long as they could. And they were getting fucked up. They were getting like their shirt, one dude's shirt was torn completely off. <laughs> they were all bloody and cut up. And they, it was like everyone was like terrified. Um, it was shocking. And I think I don't know for what reason if it was legal or what, but like as the show went on. I feel like less actually dangerous things mm -hmm. happen where they were like, and that, that, that's what was so great about that, especially first and second episode is that like every episode was just shocking. You mean first, second seasons? Yeah, sorry. Like, I was like, how the fuck they get away with that? It's yeah. literally like they used to execute people that way where they drag him at the back of a horse. Mm. Yeah, it's literally, the dude's shirt was shredded off his body. And then uh, the other st side of it is the animal torture. Oh my God, it's so, so one You of the, would never be able to do it today. Dude, it's, it's, it's hard to watch. The worst thing I saw, so a lot of times they're blending up um, insects, live insects like worms and cockroaches and beetles and the shit they always turn them into smoothies so they blend them alive but the craziest one was they had a huge bullfrog like this big that they blended alive and showed what the fuck yeah <laughs> i haven't i still haven't seen that part because i was looking away with theodore mm. i gotta go back and a fucking they it, i mean it, there was other, I mean, even the insects is hard to watch because it it's not like, there. there's like huge beetles and cockroaches and worms and they're just, they're alive and they're just blending them alive and showing it on camera. And then the person just straight chugs it. I feel like the most disgusting one that I've seen was the, a dead rat that they oh my blended. Oh fucking God. And. So good. And then they had to drink it. And well, it hold was on, set, like, set it up. Yeah, you set it up. They go out to the, if you've been in New York City, you know there's all these hot dog stands where they sell a hot dog for like a dollar, and they take it out of this old water with tongs. So they're on the streets of New York City. What does he take out? Not a hot dog, a dead rat, a whole dead rat. Puts it in a blender with a little sewage water and fucking blends it right there, an entire dead rat. Hair, skeleton, tail, I mean, everything. It's a whole wrap. A lot of hair. Really gross. And then he puts it in a bowl and gives them a spoon. And they have to... I was actually shocked because they ate it all. Like, that there was two guys that had a challenge, and they both 
didn't have any trouble eating that dead rat, which shocked the hell out of me. They were talking about how they had, like, hair stuck in their teeth. Um, Fear Factor is a crazy show, man. I watched every fucking episode, but I have to admit, it got really boring towards the end. And watching Joe Rogan's uh, transformation is funny, too. Like, you can tell his testosterone levels are going through the roof towards the end. <laughs> like, they came back for uh, the last season. They were they came back for, like, a little special, and he comes back, and he's all tatted up, both of his arms, <laughs> full tats. He's, he's, like, more yacked than ever. You can tell he's been shooting testosterone into his testicles and, uh, and taking alpha brain and shit, like... So, apparently some guy sued them for that rat episode. Oh, really? Because I saw Because apparently he couldn't stomach what he watched. <laughs> well, I'm not surprised. Wait, it was just a viewer? Just a viewer. Uh, it was so gross that he sued. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so I think the most obscene stuff I've seen, and, and I've, I'm like an expert because I, I, wa I don't think anyone's watched as much Fear Factor as I did in that time. I would just watch it every day, all day. <laughs> did you know that they just recently revived it? No, they didn't. Wait, they, what? They did, apparently. It's on... MTV and the host is ludicrous now. I'm not watching. Are you Luda. kidding? I'm Wait, kidding. how long has what? that been on? Since 2017. What? So like relatively recently. Yeah, there. there That's got to be so tame. We're gonna have to watch we that and report back. We gotta check it out. Yeah, check it out. Ludicrous. What the I, heck? So, in my opinion, Joe Rogan made that show. That show would have been nothing. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Because Joe Rogan is such like an alpha male character. And he peer pressures people, he shames people, he humiliates people, and he really amps up the, the, the environment. And he actually is really good at encouraging people through the challenges yeah. who wouldn't otherwise do it. And he's so, he's so perfect for that show. He made that show. Ludicrous. Give me a fucking break. Yeah, that's kind of hard to picture. But yeah, apparently it's a thing. Two seasons are out. Like there was one scene. Let me tell you about how Joe Rogan's good for the show. I'm telling you, I'm an expert at Fear Factor. He goes, there's one challenge where they have to eat um, a giant Madagascar hissing cockroach. They're mm -hmm. huge, nope. living cockroaches. Nope. Oh, that's nothing on that show. And so uh, one of the girls, I think it was a celebrity, it was a celebrity edition, and one of them failed the competition. So they're like, okay, I'll tell you what, if you eat, this hissing Madagascarian cockroach hole, you can come to the finals. And she's like, no fucking way, no fucking way. And Joe Rogan's like, I'll eat one. And he takes an entire hissing cockroach. I mean, they're huge, man. I'm, ta I'm talking like both of your thumbs together. Just dropped you a link with pictures of them. Yeah, they're fucking enormous. Oh, you have a picture? Oh, uh, that's not. Oh, you don't want to see a picture? <laughs> I mean, here, if you watch the show, do you see how big they are? Jesus. Disgusting. Yeah. Ugh. I mean, it, this guy, it's this, it's, it's, they're enormous. And so he puts the whole fucking thing in his mouth and he eats it. He's trying to be a badass. He was really badass, but he, he started gagging. <laughs> but, but it did he was it. gagging and I think laughing because yeah. he was shocked by how disgusting it was. Yeah. Was it alive when he yeah. ate it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He probably felt like they're always around alive. And shit. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. and, they, they eat like live scorpions, <laughs> uh, tarantula, leeches. Yeah. I can't hang with that shit, man. I can't no. watch that show. And so um, he goes, he he gets it down and he goes, that's why I'm the host of Fear Factor. <laughs> because he ha he can, he at times almost yaks. Yeah. He at times, but he always holds it together. But the yeah. So the worst thing I ever saw on that show was they put the contestants, again, always the worst ones they somehow get through, but they put the contestants in a tank full of cow intestines. And what they had to do was bite into the intestines and suck out the shit. Spit it into a cup and then drink it. So they had these huge long intestines and they would bite into it and it would be squirting everywhere. And they would suck it up or they would like uh, sponge it out like that and they would spit it into a cup. And it, when they would bite in it, it was really juicy. It would squirt everywhere. It was full of shit. And then they had to drink it. And I'm like, how the fuck did that even... How is that? And people always do it. How do you survive that? Yeah. Somehow they do it. Well, that one actually nobody had any problem with. And the rat. The, and the, one, ra the, the one that disgusted me the most. Those, those, those dudes ate it like chocolate ice cream. Yeah. They did. So about that one, the guy 
sued them for two and a half million dollars. To just claiming he felt so disgusted <laughs> for watching the stunt. Uh, he felt dizzy and lightheaded and vomited. And he claimed that his disorientation was so severe that he ran into a doorway and seriously injured himself. Part of that is a fucking... <laughs> and then the judge threw it out. Thank you. Obviously. Damn, right. that, that was during the era where everyone was just suing for anything. Yeah. And also, so you told me that they had an episode of when the contestant had to drink donkey semen. Yeah, that didn't air. So, yeah. Because it was, it was so obscene. It was rejected obscene. by NBC. It was the only episode that NBC ever rejected where they, it was a twins episode. You can find it online, but they cut it. Uh, and actually, it wasn't on Hulu. I, was, I wasn't sure because they re-released it. But it's a twins episode, and there's these really, I, as I remember, cute, like, petite, blonde <laughs> twins. And he goes, well, you'll have to do it. He brings out a huge pitcher of donkey semen. And they have to chug, eat both. So one of them is donkey urine and one of them is mm. donkey semen. And they both, and one has to choose which one. And they, and I'm thinking like, how is this possible? And they do it. They do it. They do it. And then there's a guy couple that does it too. Wow. Chugging an entire pitcher of semen. <laughs> yeah. Crazy, right? Then there's another one. Uh, so that that was the only episode that was cut. But they used to do, like, the stunts they would do in the beginning were so insane. Like, mm -hmm. they would shut down, like, huge parts of Los Angeles and city where, and get, like, access crazy to, like, huge skyscrapers in L.A. And they're crawling out. And it was really amazing. And then towards the end, I think they just got lazy or lower budget because they were just in the desert on a crane pretty much but in stunt. a way they had bigger budget because they started doing all these crazy explosions and like didn't, destroying cars every time the producers didn't understand no that. it's like more it's money not about more money it's the youtube red syndrome yeah they, uh, us and all of our creator fans that we know whenever they pitch to youtube red they're like okay but um we need to justify that we're, we're charging people i guess it's youtube premium now yeah. And, but so we need to spend more money. I'm like, well, fuck, shut up. <laughs> like I pitched to them. I pitched them a really good concept. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make this character, the vape niche guy, except I go to different subcultures and study the subculture and uh, assimilate. Mm -hmm. So every episode I become a different guy. I'm not so like in one episode I'd be like become a skater. Mm -hmm. And they said that it was too low budget. Something that I can make that would it c could exist in front of a paywall. I'm like, are you fucking stupid? Yeah. I need good people. That's what I'm paying for. Not right. explosions. I'm paying for good people. They don't get it. These yeah. people don't understand what makes a good show. They don't even understand it, and they work in the industry. Um, the other one that was super obscene was, like, they have cow blood. Like, a swimming pool of just cow blood. They've done that a couple of times. And... To see someone covered in blood, like they were bobbing for cow hearts or something, mm. and they come up and their head is just yeah. covered in blood. And it's yeah. just so, it's so sick. It really is just so sick. And the other thing about this show is that it's such a timepiece. It's so funny oh, to watch. Frosted tips, puka shell necklaces, Everyone. fake tits. All the girls are like models. Fake tits, though. Yeah, that all was so blonde, in. tan. Uh, they're always uh, wearing a bikini. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> always. It's and then so they always funny. make sure to have a water challenge, and then they do like <laughs> a slow pan up the body. Oh yeah, they when they take off their clothes, they always do like a shot when mm -hmm. they show everything. They try to pretend like that's not what they're doing. <laughs> they try to be cool about it, but it's so obvious. <laughs> and all the guys look like before four. <laughs> it's great. I, I seriously loved every, <laughs> almost every episode. Um, yeah, it's on Hulu, every episode. I highly recommend it. But apparent, so apparently the show obviously was so popular at first and then tapered off. But in syndication, it's like huge. It's like okay. a huge, huge show, like 700 million bucks. I wonder if Joe has a back end on that. Must have, right? Because he I, gets residuals he makes for sure. Show. It's not for sure. He wasn't that famous when he started doing it. Huh. But he did. He did every single episode, so I'm pretty sure that he got some good like conditions. And he was he wasn't he, super famous, but he was on news radio by that time. Well, so I, like he was like a known actor and stuff. I, 
Yeah, but no, like he wasn't may, unknown, maybe, but this show made him famous. Maybe he sure. didn't in the beginning, but I feel like as the, they kept doing more seasons, there must have been a renegotiation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he really makes the show. But they could have just given him a really nice per episode fee, not knowing that it would be mm-hmm. like so syndicated. Yeah. Because I mean, I'm sure Joe, I'm sure Joe's really well off. But I don't know because that's like, if he had back end on Fear Factor, that's like, Hundred million, like crazy numbers. Maybe not. What do I know? What the fuck do I know? I don't know what resig- how does it work. Is if if the show made seven hundred million dollars in syndication, I don't know what's a normal back end. Let's say one and a half percent, because he's just a guy. Maybe it's five percent residual. Well, like I, I, I'm not completely sure either. Uh, but it seems like a lot to get a whole like five percent. It, it's usually per airing more so than just like a flat fee when they okay, sell it well, into syndication. Okay, so like well, every time it airs, he gets a little bit of money, assuming he, he does have residuals on it. Well, if he got 5%, which seems high to me, I don't know, but that'd be $35 million. It's a lot of dough. Yeah, it's a lot of dough. It's a lot of donkey semen you can buy with that. But I'm sure he, I'm sure he, he makes that about every episode of the podcast, <laughs> so he's all good. <laughs> But it's all on Hulu, dude. I would totally check that out if you're just chilling and wants. I mean, it, <laughs> especially the first season. I think you'll be hooked. But the first season just shocked the fucking hell out of me. The only challenges I always hated was the one with dogs. So boring and dumb. Oh yeah. They have. Th- it's just ridiculous. Some of the times it's just so unfair. Like you pit a ninety pound girl against a two hundred pound guy, and it, the and then they have a dog come attack them. They're in like a dog attack suit, and the dog weighs ninety pounds. So of course the dog's gonna tackle the girl to the ground, mm-hmm. and the guy's clear with like absolutely no challenge at all. Mm-hmm. The best ones are when it's like a mix, a perfect mix where the women ha- are an evil even playing field with the men. Sometimes they really surprise you. You would think like there's no way a guy wouldn't win it, and yeah, then a dude. woman does. Yeah, the uh, women, win. the women. Yeah, the women are fierce competitors on that show. Pretty funny. Definitely. Um, like, and I remember, I now remember the last challenge of the first episode again blew my mind. <laughs> they had a taxi hanging from a crane at this absurd angle, just insane yeah. angle. And you had to climb to the back and get a flag. And they made it rainy. And they made it rain. So I was like, how the fuck can anyone do this? And of course, no, I don't, well, I think one guy, guy did complete it, but the first guy slipped off and like almost broke his arm yeah. trying to catch on and grab himself. Yeah. And he fucking destroyed his arm. <laughs> so the first episode was amazing. Like people were almost dying. <laughs> They're being so, I was just, it was amazing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um. And it just, I don't know if either it it wore off the shock or they got more conservative. I think both. But, dude, I don't know. That first season was just fucking like boom, boom, boom. <laughs> every, every episode is a banger, you know? And then there's really funny ones. Listen to me going on about Fear Factor. <laughs> there's really funny ones where the contestants suck and they just <laughs> won't do anything. And Joe just berates the hell out of them. Those are really fun to watch, yeah. too. And there's even an episode where Joe gets in a fight with a dude and puts him in a headlock. That was pretty epic. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. So, yeah, that's it. I, they, there, and there you go. I'm complaining. Here I just won another extra half hour when I could have covered all these topics. But I had to fucking... By the way, we'd like to thank Hulu for sponsoring this episode. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Hulu, though. I like Hulu. Anything about cable. I watch Hulu more than Netflix at this point. Oh, I know why. It's because they have all the reality shows. And they have all the new shit. Like, you almost don't even need cable with Hulu because they have ongoing shows. Mm -hmm. Like, Bachelor Nation, what up? They put the new Bachelor on. You just have to wait an extra day. But I'm paying $150 for Dish, and they fucking suck asshole. I can't wait to cancel it. I'd rather (laughs) suck the shit out of a cow intestine than pay them another 150 bucks. That's not true. <laughs> oh, yeah, and the best part of Fear Factor, it's only $50,000 prize. The shit <laughs> well, that these people go through. <laughs> no, but even... That's pretty either, good. No, no, it's not. It's not good <laughs> enough. It's really not. Like, maybe in the first season in, like, the early 2000s, I mean, I don't know where inflation was at, but 10 episodes, 10 seasons later, it's still 50000 
<laughs> and the shit that they go through. Sometimes they do, they go up. They had a yeah. They do have special hundred thousand and the million. That they oh yeah, <laughs> dude, you guys are gonna love this. They do some. They did like a couple times a million dollar special where it's like seven seven episodes long. And in the fine print, they say the million dollars is paid to the winner over forty years. So they're still what? being paid off now, the winners of that shit. That was like $25,000 a year, which, I mean, is nice, but, like, you're not a millionaire. And then I'm imagining... You had a really good point about yeah, that. <laughs> I'm just imagining these people, like, they're kind of low life, like, uh, just, like, imagine a dude who won Fear Factor 20 years ago and he doesn't work. He just collects his $25,000 Fear Factor pension. So in a way, it's it was like bad for them because it put them in this middle position of like oh, I don't need to work, right? But then you're it's getting paid very little. Twenty five, and then as the years go on, inflation hits you. By the time they pay your ass back over forty years, that money's going to be worth like so much less, right? Yeah, because in forty years, yeah, probably like half of what it was originally. Forty worth. years. Who even knows if the. If the <laughs> Government, the government hasn't dissolved yeah, yet. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I just love the the image of one of these guys like, yeah, I won Fear Factor. I won Fear Factor 30 years ago. I've got another 10 years left on my pension. 25000 a year. That's so funny. In the fine print. 40 years. And then that person ends up with no education, no career. Oh, it fucking cursed their whole life. I think the show was the worst thing that ever happened to them. You know? Because you think you're a millionaire, but you're so far from a millionaire. You're so far from a millionaire. Mm -hmm. You're basically making the salary of a full-time McDonald's employee. <laughs> Not to poo-poo their service. I mean, God bless. But that ain't a millionaire. Like, what are the chances they went out and got gainfully employed and was just like, I'm going to make an extra 25000 on top of this. Someone who appeared on Fear Factor? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> They're celebrating. And then that's basically what The Big Lebowski is about. <laughs> he was a winner on Fear Factor like 35 <laughs> years prior. And he's about to run out of money. God bless. Love The Fear Factor. All right, we're going to have to try to make this thumbnail work. <laughs> Fucking man spreading. We're gonna have to go crazy on this one. Ethan destroys feminist ideology in one oh fell God. swoop. Magtow Nation. Migtow. Ethan goes Migtow. <laughs> Can you make a dumber sounding name? Migtow. Like, dude, if you're gonna try to be badass, Migtow <laughs> sounds like sounds like what Steven Seagal does. You know what Steven Seagal looks like? He's all yeah. fat. It's like a really shitty martial arts for fat old dudes. MGTOW. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up. All right. Friday is going to be action packed, so y'all are not going to want to miss that, right, Elo? It's business. Guys, this has been your parents, Ethan and Elo Klein, the only people that truly care about you in this world. <laughs> your best friends, your only companions. Um, I mean, this is everything. HD Podcast is everything. Because without us, who's going to tell you what's going on in the world? Who's going to tell you what to think? And who's going to listen to your problems? Uh, the people around you are just trying to control you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. At, at some point, it starts to get weird. The people around you are controlling you. Here's our address. You can send us you, uh, your 10% of your income. A tith, if you were. Did I say that right? Tith? Uh, tithe. 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 Yes. Tithe. Why the fuck does the church get 10% and I don't? How, I do way more for you guys than the church. What does the church do for you? You know what I mean? Like, seriously, think about it. Oh, I'm a pastor. I'm going to talk to you about the same dumb shit I did last week. I change it up at least. And you can watch it at home. Way more comfortable. Uh, so the our, my address will be in the description. You can save me 10%. The H3 tithe. Tith. Right, Dan? Tithe, yes. And yes, you can send us your money. Please thank, do. Thank you. Um, we will see you on Friday. We love y'all. We appreciate you. This has been a wild, off-the-rails experience. This episode was off the rails. Song is nearing the end, Dan said. All right. So, guys, we'll see you on Friday, where we're going to be on the rails. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.